the solution for union. So our challenge is to construct a function union that takes an input array of arrays, compares each array, and returns a new flat array that contains all elements. If there are duplicate elements, only add it once to the new array. Preserve the order of the elements starting from the first element of the first input array. And the bonus challenge is to use reduce. So we're going to start by just creating our function body. So we have a function union, which has one parameter, an array of arrays. And now we're going to write some pseudocode and go through the overall strategy we'll be using here. So we're going to use reduce here, as is given in the bonus challenge, um, because reduce gives us a really clean syntax to use when we're iterating through an array and keeping track of an accumulated value, which in this case will be an output array that contains all the unique elements. So first thing we'll do is use reduce to iterate through the outer array of arrays. And in our call of reduce, we're going to initialize an empty array uh, to be our output. And then once we're inside this callback function, otherwise known as the reducer function that we're using in our call of reduce, we're going to iterate through each inner array so that we have access to the individual elements in each of those nested arrays. And once we have that element, we're going to say if the element is not present in the output array, add it to the output array. And then at the end of each call of our reducer function, we'll want to make sure that we're returning the output array. And then this also means that once our call of reduce has finished evaluating, that will evaluate to our output array. So we want to also return what comes from our original call of reduce at the beginning of our function. So we'll say return evaluated result. All right, so we're gonna start coding. Um, and as I just mentioned, our return keyword is actually going to be the first thing that we use here because we want to return what reduce evaluates to. So we have our array of arrays here, calling reduce. Now we're writing our, again, callback or reducer function here. We'll have two parameters, our output array and our current array, creating an anonymous function here. And so moving this piece of pseudocode up here and the rest of our pseudocode into our function body here. And so we're going to, yeah, now initialize an empty array to be our output. So the way that we can do this with reduce is we have our accumulator value here, which we've named output array. And to, in order to initialize this to something to use in our first call of the function, we can just add it as a second argument to our call of reduce. And then current array is just our current element that we're dealing with. So it'd be, you know, array one, two, and three, and so on. So now we're going to iterate through each inner array represented by a current array. Uh, we're going to use for each here because it gives us a very clean syntax to use to write some functionality um, to do with each element in an array. So we have current array calling for each. We're writing our callback function in here. We only have one parameter here, which will be the current element. And then we can write functionality in here where we're checking the current element we're looking at. We're just saying if the element is not present in the output array, we'll add it to the output array. So we're going to use a conditional statement here. We're saying if the output array using the includes method here, which will just return a Boolean value saying whether or not the element is present, but then in order to check if it's not present, we're going to add the bang operator before this whole statement. So now this will say 
if the output array does not include that element, run the functionality inside of these curly braces, or we're simply going to use the push method to add our elements to the output array. So we have output array dot push the element. And then at the end of each call of our reducer function, so this is after we run our for each functionality, we're going to return output array. So this will return it to each successive call of our reducer function as we iterate. And then at the end, return an output array. And then we have the return keyword again up here on line five, so that once reduce is done evaluating, we'll return the final output array from our whole functions context. So I'm just going to uncomment these lines here. We'll see it run. And that is our expected output.